Most often, PPIs are meant to be used for a short course of therapy, and yet it seems so many patients end up taking them for the long haul. So let's discuss how to stop a PPI, how best to do that, and when it's better not to. If you are under 50 without a family history of stomach or esophageal cancer and have typical symptoms of reflux, then try a PPI. And if you feel better, then that's great. Along the way, make lifestyle changes that will help you once you eventually stop the medication. These include stopping smoking or vaping and reducing the amount of alcohol you drink and importantly, looking at food triggers that make your reflux occur. Consider whether a medication may also be a trigger and whether you can safely change that and check out the links below for more information on this topic. If a PPI is gonna help reflux symptoms, it'll usually do so within the first four weeks of therapy. And if you feel much better after this duration, it's a reasonable time to try to stop the medication. But if you don't feel better, consider whether you're taking the medication precisely as prescribed. And in other videos, we describe exactly how to do that. If symptoms are somewhat better, but not completely resolved, try taking the medication for another month. If you just feel like there's not been much benefit at all yet, you may want to double down on the dose. This is also a consideration, even if symptoms are moderately improved. After two months though, you really should have some kind of improvement of reflux if it's just simple run-of-the-mill reflux. And after that, you need to go and visit a GI doctor if these symptoms persist. It's important to understand that taking a PPI doesn't cure reflux. So if you go out and you have a big thing of wings and a six pack of beer, don't be surprised that symptoms return, just like you wouldn't expect to run a mile, not have sore legs. So you may simply need a PPI now and then ahead of a heavy meal. And the occasional use of a PPI, even over the long term, is not expected to have any significant long-term side effects. And it's for this reason that PPIs are readily available over the counter. What if a patient is taking a proton pump inhibitor to help an ulcer heal? If it's in the stomach or the duodenum, that should take about a month to be fully healed, whereas in the esophagus, it can take a total of two months to heal. But after that, you should expect that the ulcer has healed and there's no further need to take a proton pump inhibitor. However, that does come with some caveats. Those caveats center around why did you get the ulcer in the first place? If you're taking a boatload of NSAIDs and that's something you can now stop, then we can expect that going forward, you are much less likely to develop an ulcer. Now, the occasional use of ibuprofen going forward is probably not going to burn a hole in your stomach, but if you start taking that regularly again, then it may be wise to take a proton pump inhibitor along with it to prevent another ulcer developing. What if you're on a blood thinner and you had a really severe bleed and you're going to need to remain on that blood thinner because you have atrial fibrillation or you have a stent in your heart? Well, in that case, you again want to protect against that risk of recurrent bleeding by maintaining a proton pump inhibitor in the foreseeable future. When a patient has Barrett's esophagus, then the long-term use of a proton pump inhibitor has proven beneficial to reduce the risk that Barrett's esophagus progresses to cancer. A low dose has been proven to be all that is needed to be effective to enjoy this benefit, so taking a higher dose probably doesn't add much to reduce that risk and is probably unnecessary. But if you have severe symptoms of reflux, then again, this would be a reason to control those symptoms. So the idea here is take the PPI long-term to reduce the risk of Barrett's, and if you find an added benefit to better control symptoms, then that benefit probably exceeds any risk of long-term use of these medications. It would be a reasonable medication to continue indefinitely. If you have Barrett's esophagus and concerning changes are found, then I would encourage people to rather than increase the dose of a PPI, go into the direction of some of the endoscopic therapies to take care of that problem. The point being here is don't just be on higher and higher doses of PPIs with the idea that this is going to obliterate the Barrett's esophagus. It's also worth noting that if you have severe and persistent symptoms of reflux, then this can be a reason to consider anti-reflux surgery and get off medications altogether. Though that is again with the caveat that if you have Barrett's esophagus, we would encourage that you continue those because of the proven benefit of a low dose PPI over the long term. So most people who start taking a PPI should have an end date in mind when they're gonna eventually stop that medication. And when they do, there is a best way to stop this medication. And to understand this strategy, you have to understand what's happening in the stomach while you're taking the medicine. Your stomach's a living thing, and so it doesn't simply take this suppression of acid laying down. No, it tries to fight back, and it makes more and more and more acid pumps. And so now when you stop taking the medicine, you get rebound acid, more acid than you had probably even before you started the medication. 
Acid rebound makes it difficult to successfully stop a proton pump inhibitor. Is there a better way to stop it then? Yes, there is, and that is by gently allowing the stomach to return to producing acid. And as the stomach recognizes that it is successfully producing acid, it will reduce the number of proton pumps that it is making. That means there's less and less acid and a gradual return to normal that patients will better tolerate. This is achieved by taking a medication called famotidine or pepsid that is also available over the counter. And it is a weaker suppressor of acid than the stronger omeprazole, the proton pump inhibitors. Rather than completely smothering out acid production, it only decreases it down to about 10% of normal. And this allows you to return to normal slowly over the course of two or four weeks, after which time you can very often now stop the pepsid and go back to totally normal. I hope this information gives you some guidance on when to stop taking a proton pump inhibitor, when you need to make sure that you continue it, and how to beat acid rebound. Check out some of the other videos on the channel for more information on GERD. Thank you for watching and be safe.